it's just funny because like Ben one doesn't understand anything about this story, but also two Ben doesn't understand anything about story writing in general. We know that already. He's written stories. They all suck. What do I think of Ben Shabibo's Last of Us HBO take? Okay, time for is this going to be about the? Is this going to be about episode three? Oh, it is. Yeah, I saw his Facebook post on this, and all I'm going to say is this. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, Nick Offerman is the goat. I mean, he is gay as fuck, okay? He played the shit out of that role. I mean, I watched it. I was like, God damn, dude. My man had a, a gay demon inside of him this entire time, okay? So that's number one. Number two, very sad. That's it. He's just, he, he fucking, it was very, very sad, okay? Also, number three, He's like, it's a zombie show. Why are there no zombies? <laughs> that was literally his analysis on that Facebook post. He's like, it's a zombie show, and there are noticeably very little zombies, hypothetically, in this episode. And I was like, yeah, no wonder, dude. No wonder you fucking made a movie that only 800 people saw on the day of release, okay? That's insane. I actually said that episode had too much kissing. <laughs> That's awesome. I say not enough. Hasan abi ne zaman aktarmayı düşünüyorsun abi? 24 saat geçti. İlk gece battaniye, çadır, yardımlar, insanlar açsız. Arkadaşım, para benim elimde değil. Para direkt olarak oraya gidiyor. Para direkt olarak o kuruma gidiyor. O kurum gönderiyor parayı. Benim cebime hiç değmiyor para. Hatta ben kendi cebimden de para verdim üstüne üstlük. 25.000 dolar. Niye para benim cebime gidiyor zannediyorsunuz? Nereden duyuyorsunuz bunu? Kendi cebime girecek olsa niye link kurayım sizin için amına koyayım? Buraya para verin hadi hep beraber para koyalım diye. Kendi cebimden niye para koyayım cebimden çıkan paraya? Manyak mısınız abi? No I'm not, I'm not shitting on him. He just doesn't understand. He like literally thinks there is this like discourse going around. Uh, where people think that like uh, the funds are going to me or something. I don't know why. I don't think he's being a bad person. Ne zaman verecekler bilmiyorum. Ne zaman aktarıyorlar bilmiyorum. Ama expedite edeceklerini söylediler özel olarak bana. Speed embesiyle anlamadı öyle şeyler söyledi. Ondan millet öyle sanıyor. Oh, Speed said that I fucking uh, am, am getting the money myself. I DM'd him and I told him that that's not the case. What the fuck? I I I literally DM them. I was like, bro. <sighs> I said, no, it's going to soft giving a US 501c3 that will distribute the funds between Ahbab, Akut, Care Syria, and Care Turkey. That's what I told them. That episode had no reason for existing. It overall served no purpose of the main story. It was super well done and written, but it felt like a side story. Yeah, well, the reason why they put it in there. Is because it's filler. And also, it's TV. And it was really good filler. It's world building. That's the difference. That's the main difference between a video game and what you can do on a TV show. That's the beauty of the, the, the medium. They're, like, the dude always, the Last of Us dude, what is it, Elliot? Druckmann or whatever like he always it's very obvious that he, he loves movies he made a fucking movie video game or Neil Neil Druckmann sorry not Elliot I don't know where I came up with Elliot anyway it, it's so obvious that he always wanted to write movies that he fucking wrote a movie as a video game okay so it's clear that he wants to it's clear that he wanted to just like expand on the world building in a way that he couldn't in the video game. And that's what he's doing in the here in the, in the HBO show. And honestly, that's why it's so good. I, I loved it. Not even filler setting up the story of Joel is showing the purity of love in a shit world. And Joel and Ellie will be the opposite end of that purity spectrum. 
Chekhov's gunning the ending. How love can be pure and lovey dovey sometimes can hurt so many people too. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I guess like as a vehicle, uh, I think that's like kind of a, a a not so subtle way of saying that. As especially as like the final note literally says it. Like he writes it. You know what I mean? In there, and Joel also repeats it, where he's like, "Yeah, you got to do." You got to do what you got to do to save the ones you love. <laughs> uh, I didn't have anything to live for except for my loved ones. <laughs> and I'm doing this because my loved one told me to do this for you, to save you. And it's like, okay, uh, I mean, I got it. Better not better not love you as my own child anytime soon. Uh, I hope not. <laughs> That'd be crazy if that would happen. It's like, well, we played the fucking game. We know, man. I, I don't know. The episode is literally set up to show Joel's failure and being able to save the ones he loves. Those characters are actually in the game, but have a different, more depressing storyline where one of them leaves the other and he kills himself in a final letter. He describes how much he hates him, so this version is way better. Wait, what? I don't remember that. In the game, that episode would be a heap of notes around the house. You have to read which would have made for shit TV. God, I love Pedro Pascal. I just, dude, he's so sick. I just, he can, he can make, he can make anything work, man. I, not even for a second, feel like he's out of place as Joel. You know what I mean? He's so fucking good. He's so goddamn cool, dude. It's crazy. Episode three reinforces Joel's purpose to be a protector from Bill's letter. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And it also signals to the to the end of the show and why he is doing what he's doing. You know what I mean? Like, why he does what he ends up doing. It, come on. It's obvious. Like, also, there's a reason why there aren't as many zombers in, in each episode. And that's because, like, I feel like if Pedro Pascal was, like, you know, killing as many people, which is funny because, like, the the writers talked about this, right? Um, if there were as many zombies that, that he's, like, fucking clapping. Like, I got very annoyed while watching episode two, right? Where uh, they're in the fucking classic museum scene and the clickers come in. Stop saying spoilers, by the way. This is a fucking video game that we've all literally played at this point. Jesus Christ. Um, but, like... There's no way you're being spoiled. It, it, it follows the original material so perfectly. But anyway, my point is, I was getting frustrated because I was like one tapping. You know what I mean? When I was playing it, I was like, I was doming up these fucking clicker boys. And then when he can't do it, you're like, ah, come on. <laughs> but like, that's kind of the whole point. Like that's the, it's building up suspense. Stop saying copium one tapping. Come on, I'm not that bad at fucking aiming. Shut up. I was back seating a fucking TV show, dude. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, let's hear what this fucking idiot has to say. Things I hate. Gay people. Okay, so we are going to steer into some dicey waters here. I'm about to criticize an episode of the TV show, The Last of Us. So I'm going to say right up front, HBO's The Last of Us, right? This is the one. That, uh, that stars Pedro Pascal. And um, it's really well produced, written by Craig Mazin, who's a super talented guy. He's the one who is behind Chernobyl. Okay, so first, the things about this series that are good. And, and again, preface, I've never played the game. So don't care about the game. Don't care. Shocking. About how true it is to the game. There are lots of gamers out there. You want to watch their videos on the correlation between the game and the, and the show. That's fine. I'm just watching it as a piece of pure TV entertainment. Okay, I'm coming from, I don't care what's canon. I don't care what's not canon. Just coming at it from the, the view of a TV viewer, so I'm just going to say that right up front. That is not my particular purview. I don't play video games because I'm not a child. I know. I, I'm, I'm just joking. Lots of, lots of good people play video games. Okay, in any case. This is, I was about to say, he knows his audience. Like, come on, brother. You can't be trying to fucking appeal to, like, the sweatiest, like, right-wing Gamergate holdouts while simultaneously claiming that only children play video games because they're going to get mad at you. You fucking talk about how they're like soy-facing Funko Pop collectors. They will fucking lose it on you, okay? Including Andrew Clayton, who's a mediocre person. Anyway, the, the Last of Us is a, for those who haven't seen it, it is a zombie show. 
Okay, it's a show about a zombie apocalypse that essentially arises because fungi, fungi go viral, essentially, and take over people's brains and turn them into zombies. That is the premise of the show. And it's really well produced, and it's beautifully shot, and it's really well scripted, and all the rest. So the first two episodes are about Pedro Pascal finding, it, it, again, some of this is sort of hackneyed trope, but, but he is introduced to the other main character who is a young girl. The young girl is, for some reason, immune to the zombie virus. And so the, the question is, can he get her to a place where presumably they are going to try to manufacture a cure from her? Right? That, that's where the show is going, I would assume, because any other place doesn't make any sense. So it is this character, Joel, and this character, Ellie, and they are navigating the zombie apocalypse. And then we get to, so that's the first couple episodes. And they're, they're good. They're really compelling. Again, really well made, really well written. Oh. And then we get to episode three. And this, according to the media, is the. But it's like, Fanra is a liberal. I liked it because it reminds me of what Joe Biden's administration tried to do to us with the COVID vaccines. <laughs> He's like, that's why I liked it. <laughs> the single greatest episode of television that has ever been. The, if you read the headlines on episode three, this is the most important thing that has ever happened in the history of television. I don't think Ben knows that Ellie is gay. So <laughs> I think that's why he's... I think that's why he's popping off right now. <laughs> he's like, wow. CNN, The Last of Us, just made an early claim to one of the best TV episodes of 2023. The Last of Us viewership soars 12% to a new series high with heartbreaking episode three. It's historic. It's important. Okay, guys, it's historic and important. Now Yawn. Who cares? Yes, dude. Liberal columnists love fucking gassing up TV shows because they got nothing else to write about. It's kind of like a less damaging version of what the right wing does whenever, like, a trans person sneezes in public. You know what I mean? They got nothing else to write about, so they write like this. Okay? Meanwhile... You motherfuckers lose your shit when M&M panties are, are not sexy any longer. You know what I mean? Shut up. Now, why is it historic and important? It's historic and important because it's about two gay dudes. That's why. So the essential plot of this episode, which is the problem with this episode. And again, you want to make Brokeback Zombie Farm or whatever, fine. But the problem with this episode is that it absolutely does not advance the plot in any way and actually has no consequences. Why would you say that? You don't know the story. You didn't play the game. You're just wrong. It literally is like, perhaps, if you know the story, if you already are coming at it with the full knowledge of what happens, then you think it's way too fucking blunt and not subtle as far as, like, detailing exactly how motivations are built for Joel. It quite literally is the story. If anything, it's the main story. It's just, you know, teaching you, the viewer, the uninitiated, how Joel gets to where he is with his intentions. I don't want to say too much. Also, Joel literally got a fucking car. What do you mean? Yeah, Chatter also pointed this out. He got a car. He got a pickup truck. It definitely advances the story. Anyway. It's just funny because, like, Ben, one, doesn't understand anything about this story. But also, two, Ben doesn't understand anything about story writing in general. We know that already. He's written stories. They all suck. His movie that he made for Daily Wire, the, the Daily Wire movie, got 800 people to watch it, okay, on opening day. So, I don't, don't tell me about fucking... We're not even 800 people, sorry. It grossed $800, right? So... I don't want to hear from this fucking hack failed screenwriter about what is compelling storytelling. So the entire plot of the episode is that Ron Swanson, Nick Offerman, but he actually plays Ron Swanson, but Ron Swanson who likes to nail dudes. So Ron Swanson, a libertarian who hates the government and lives in his basement and is a prepper, but also is gay. Why was, but, that's, but, but that's like unique. Him being gay made that character cooler. It made that character way more unique. It's not, it's not that it doesn't exist in the real world, but it certainly made the character 
more interesting than the classic hoorah, I'm a doomsday prepper. It gave the character layers. Which is kind of what you do when you want to write, like, an interesting story. You know what I mean? The juxtaposition. Ron Swanson, during the zombie apocalypse, he's having himself a grand old time. For some reason, his town is completely not hit by any of the zombies at all. It's, like, completely left alone. And so he goes out and gets all these resources, and then he builds a nice fence around his place, and he sets up all of these booby traps. So if anybody shows up, whether they're raiders, whether they're zombies, they're going to get killed. And then, somehow, another dude ends up, like, falling into one of his traps. And they meet, and they bang. And they end up becoming a couple. Okay, so... You, you can see it here, right? There, there's, there's gay Ron Swanson. And uh, it's complete with like sex scenes and the whole thing. And the entire episode has no zombies, no real threat. And it is about two gay dudes who meet. Again, Ben has never played the game. So Ben doesn't understand that like, there are plenty of fucking moments in the entire sequence, in the entire franchise, where you never see a zombie, and instead the real villains are the humans all along. Like, it's kind of cliche almost. So it's shocking that Ben Shapiro does not understand, like, this basic component of a story. It's about how humans can continue being human by finding love. All things considered, in awful circumstances, and feel human again. It's also about how human beings, the raiders specifically, oftentimes are way more cruel than the zombies. The zombies are mindless. They're just following their urges, whereas human beings are motivated by greed, spite, and interest in survival, and therefore behave in ways that are even more violent than zombies, a fact that Joel points out regularly and will say, you got to, out here, you don't have to worry about, out here, you don't have to worry about the zombies. You about to, you need to worry about something way worse. Raiders. You know, that sort, of, that sort of thing. It's not like they're hiding it. They're saying it openly. At that point, it's not even subtext. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck? You can't even understand that? The story is bludgeoning you in the head with this, with this obvious thing. It's not, not something that you need to, like, pick up. Not subtle. And have a relationship in which one grows strawberries for the other. And then they die. But not being killed by zombies or under threat. One dies, he's, he gets cancer, and he decides to essentially euthanasia himself. And Gay Ron Swanson decides that he is also going to, to uh, commit suicide at the same time because Romeo and Juliet, or Romeo and Romeo in this particular case, Get to more on that in just one second. First, you know, speaking of rough financial situations, a lot of people have had to take out credit cards because obviously the- Oh my God. Them, you just let that trust the money off to most major institutions at this point. They've blown out their- still on my right. Back zombie. It literally has nothing to be fully shot. Broke back zombie. Now, institutions that say they're protecting you, they are not. Express it. VPN.com slash Ben. Okay, now, here's the problem. It's all really well produced and it's beautifully shot. Brokeback Zombie Farm. Here's the problem with Brokeback Zombie Farm. One, it's a zombie show. There are no zombies in this entire episode. Like, none. I understand. Dude, that's so stupid. There are already zombies in that episode, but like, but like, who cares? Bro, what the fuck? It's not like gore porn. It's not like a shoot 'em up. You know what I mean? It's not supposed to be just like, Joel being a badass, one-tapping fucking zombers, you know? That's not what the show is about. Ben's like, why isn't it like a Marvel movie? Didn't The Walking Dead also have humans that are more brutal? It's like a, it's like a well-established trope at this point, I feel like. Where, like, human beings are way more ruthless to one another in the, in the zombie apocalypse than, like, zombies are. You know? I didn't even watch The Walking Dead. I'm just spitting. Simplistic critique, but... There are no zombies in a zombie show. This is worth pointing out. It literally has nothing to do with the plot of the show. This is a, this is a show where it, this, this show could have completely, this entire episode could have taken place completely without a zombie apocalypse. It just would have been a, a showtime romance between two middle-aged gay dudes who get older, one dies of cancer and the other assisted suicides himself. 
That's that, that would have been the entire. It would would not have changed one iota of the show. It is completely irrelevant to the story. And one of the reasons that it is completely irrelevant to the story is because there are no stakes. And the reason that there are no stakes is because again we are in the middle of a zombie apocalypse. When you're in the middle of a zombie apocalypse, one of two issues has to come into play. One, the threat of the zombies. Or two, the threat to humanity more broadly. So if you're talking about the threat to humanity more broadly during the zombie apocalypse, what you're talking about is under- Okay, wh- but, like, but like, again, no one, and I mean no one should ever listen to Ben Shapiro talk about movies. Or at least like good movie writing. Because he himself is incapable of demonstrating that. Like, what do you mean? A good zombie show is about survival. It's like, bro, what the fuck? A good good zombie show is about surviving zombies. It's in the name. It's also about surviving as a, as a, a mankind. A good zombie show can have, like, uh, human beings being cruel. Human beings would supposed to... Human beings are supposed to get together in the face of clear and present danger. And never fight one another. I hate this. Yeah, a good show is supposed to gross more than $800. Fucking got them. Exactly. Their population, right? You're talking about there are no people. The zombies are going to take over. Humanity is going to be extinct. That is the entire threat in a zombie apocalypse. Correct? Or in an alien invasion movie. Or an a- Dude, he literally is saying it's not black and white. Like, it's not open and shut. It's not clear cut. It's not black and white. There's like... It's like too complex for Ben, which by the way, ironically, it's not. It's literally a trope at this point to have human beings be cruel to one another more so than the zombies could ever be to human beings is like a well-established trope in the zombie genre since like 1987, okay? So this idea is like a new concept to Ben because what, like did he, was he born yesterday? Did he just like, Get out of a coma? I don't understand. Like, what the fuck? That is straight up the... As a matter of fact, oh, the real villains were the humans all along is like literally at the heart of every zombie show. Like every... Since the first zombie movie, this has been a thing. No, you don't understand. Ben is saying they should be worried about the greater threat to humanity, the gays. It's true. These guys are behaving in a homosexual manner when they should be focusing on repopulating the population. You, my friend, are not... (laughs) You, my friend, are not a good Christian, and you could never be an Orthodox Jew because you are acting out on your gay desires instead of holding them close to your chest and keeping them a secret, a gay little secret. You should be having sex with women. Any other sort of species-level extinction event movie, like War of the Worlds, the question is, how do human beings repopulate? How do they survive, and how do they become successful once again. If you're going to censor an episode like that, what you need to do is you need to have an episode about people who can have babies. Again, there are only two issues in a zombie apocalypse. You could have this whole thing, but the whole thing is these two dudes in love, but they're fighting off zombies. But they never fight off the zombies. It's not an issue. So... Dude, I was joking. Dude, dude. I was joking. Why did he say that seriously? Bro, that's so dumb. Stop. Stop. That's so stupid. Conservatives will take arguments that you make jokingly and say it with sincerity. I, I was like, what's the most ridiculous? I was, in my mind, I was thinking, what's the most ridiculous thing Ben Shapiro could say here? That would be so silly that, like, we'll, you know, like, he would never say that. Turns out I was wrong. He literally said exactly what I was joking about. Oh, VIP Carissa jaded, please. Why? So, irrelevant. Or you could have them somehow interact with the main characters. They never do. They interact with the main characters for, like, 30 seconds. They are both dead by the time... The- no. They literally, oh my God, the code book that Ellie cracks to show how smart she is in episode two plays a role in the end of episode two, which you then find out is tied perfectly into episode three when they're playing 80s music on the radio. That means uh, they are the lookout. Like, uh, you know, the, the, the, 
gay dudes at the broke back whatever. I forget the character's name. I'm sorry. Oh, it was episode one. Sorry. Like, they are basically their lookout. They're basically Joel and Tess's lookout. Bill and Frank. Okay? They are their lookout. So when they send music like that to uh, Joel and Tess, they know that shit's popping off. So, no, that, that literally plays a role that ties perfectly in. That ties perfectly into the story. Because on the episode, on the end of the episode, you're, you're seeing the code. They're, they're playing, like, 80s music, but you don't hear it, or it's too late for Joel and Tess to know about it, which is kind of sad because that music basically loops if uh, it's not uh, the 80s playlist starts playing if you don't automatically trigger it uh, as, as, you know, they didn't because they were dead at that point. But we don't know about it until episode three. It's great. It's fine. Yeah, he had a timer to set up that if he didn't refresh a playlist, it would revert to an 80s in a loop, a.k.a. he's dead. The main characters arrive to pick up guns. So this entire episode is a, is a, is a sidestep. It has nothing to do with any. This kind of crap is what makes conservatives so crazy. We do not need to sexualize everything. There's nothing sexual about, like, two gay dudes loving each other, dude. It's just as sexual as, like, two straight dudes, or two straight dudes, a straight person, a straight man, and a straight woman loving each other. It's just a normal love story. You're the one who immediately goes to, like, oh, they're having hot gay sex, you know? Yeah, also straight dude sex as well, but, like, it's so stupid. This dude is so into, like, maintaining his quality of life that he's having, like, Chianti or whatever, like, a red wine that he's pairing up with his delicious steaks that he makes and shit. Of course he's going to pursue a love story. It makes sense with the, with the, with basically the entirety of that character. It makes sense with the rest of his character. Anything. Ellie and Joel could have just stopped by, found the house, picked up guns, and gone on their merry way, and it would have taken 10 seconds. Instead, you get an entire hour-long digression to do, as I say again, La Caja Falls, or whatever this is. Okay, so it's, it, it's, it's irrelevant. Beyond it being irrelevant, it has no stakes. So you want to have like an interesting conversation about love during the apocalypse? The big issue of love during the apocalypse is, what if you have a baby? What happens if you have a baby? Or should having babies be the purpose here so okay uh let him cook let's take another example of a show that did this correctly so battlestar galactica had an episode early on i think it was season two in in which one of the questions was underpopulation right the fleet is depopulating and so the question becomes what do you do about abortion dude he loves this he's like he loves the idea he loves this idea because it's like forcible reproduction as a concept is like being reinforced in is favorite uh, type of science fiction or whatever. That's why he likes it. So President Rosalind, who is a lefty, she decides that she's going to outlaw abortion because if you want humanity to survive, then it turns out that individual autonomy over your body is significantly less important than actually repopulating humanity. So here's Rosalind announcing that she's outlawing abortion, right? Because again, the stakes are whether humanity survives. It is not whether two individuals fall in love in the middle of a farm, not threatened by anyone, which is the story of this particular episode. Wait, they were definitely threatened, man. It's still survival. What? I don't get it. Ben also kind of doesn't understand. I feel like he's going to lose his fucking mind at the end of the show. If he's like thinking about this as seriously, he's going to be like the Joel haters. You know what I mean? Like he's probably going to fucking lose his mind when he finds out what happens at the end of season one. Because like, that shit's going to piss him off. If he's thinking about this so seriously as like, not that like human beings are complex and that like they sometimes make decisions that they think are the best decisions that end up being really bad for the fate of mankind, that kind of thing. Like, like <laughs> that, he's going to lose it. Dude. He's going to be like, this is the worst fucking, this is the worst episode of, in the history of, of the genre. I've never seen something so bad. It is absolutely terrifying that, uh, someone could be so selfish as to make this one singular decision as an individual. Repopulation and, and saving the planet should be uh, the ultimate goal of human beings. 
This is liberal Hollywood propaganda trying to undermine. I'm not kidding. I think he just simply likes it because there's she made abortion illegal. I don't know enough about Battlestar Galactica to tell you whether or not this is valid or even important. Like, I don't know. But he just, I think he literally just likes it because there's a leftist woman. And you expect her to be liberal. But she is denying women bodily autonomy. <laughs> <clears throat> She'll be subject to criminal penalties. Okay, so, you know, this is, this is like an actual issue. What do you do during an apocalypse? Do you actually try to preserve humanity or not? Two gay dudes falling in love and then dying of old age is not relevant to that particular conversation. Todd, of course, man. Do whatever you want, brother. King. And I can say, well, that's not what they wanted to cover on the show. That's not what they were interested in covering on the show. The, the truth is, it's a much more compelling storyline. I mean, that's the entire plot line of A Quiet Place, right? You have an alien invasion. What do you do when you have a baby? Do you continue to have babies in, the, in view of the fact that there's a threat to the children, in view of the fact they're going to have to live difficult and rough lives? Dude, Ben, if Ben works himself up this much, he's going to come out of the other side of this conversation an anti-natalist, by the way. Should humanity survive is a fundamental question that we should be asking. When, what is the sole purpose of humanity to survive if there's nothing else to survive for? And we have nothing left. Should humanity continue to survive or should it cease to exist when all the conditions are pain and torture? After all, a baby can't consent ethically to being born. You never consented to being born. Oh my God, I never consented to being born. Life is a sequence of endless disappointment and sometimes a lot of pain and suffering. Maybe it is unethical to give birth to another human being. Oh God. <laughs> Lives and all the rest of it, right? That, that, that, but you can say... I see the argument. Okay, well, that's not what they wanted to take on in episode three. So I have a question. What, what were they seeking to take on in episode three? What was the major topic that they were seeking to take on? People falling in love during the apocalypse? What are the stakes? We don't know any of these characters. He's the only person in Netflix since you enjoy forced births category. <laughs> oh, Netflix has them. Yeah, Netflix is an entirely different algo for Ben Shapiro. Nor are we going to care about them beyond this particular episode. Which means that it's basically just a sidetrack. It's a throwaway episode. But it's so important because it has gay people, you see. It's so important. And, you know, the guy who created the, the video game, of course, is a big lefty. I they were just telling a story, Ben. Yeah, someone in the chat said this analysis makes so much sense when you realize Ben has never been in love. And you're right. Like, it's literally like trying to describe a beautiful picture full of colors to a dog. You know what I mean? Like... It's not going to get it. It can't see it, dude. That's it. For Ben, marriage and partnership is just simply not about love, not about mutual respect, not about any of that. It's just about populating the planet, having little, little Ben Shapiro's running around. So he cannot comprehend that, like, in an apocalyptic scenario, uh, two people could find love and, and find fulfillment in their lives, as a matter of fact, through that love. Because before they get together, one is trying to survive. We don't know too much about her, uh, his backstory. But, but Nick Offerman's character is simply just surviving for the sake of survival. And he openly admits that, too. He basically says, like, I had nothing. I was just, like, kind of, I hated everybody. I had nothing. I was just basically existing. I, I, I just was living for the sole purpose of living, but like not really much else. But also what comes along with that is fear. Exactly. I wasn't afraid until you came along because love and, uh, and, and the desire to protect someone all of a sudden can create a, a, a whole different motivator for you it can change you it can shape you right like that's kind of the not so subtle point that it's trying to bludgeon us in the fucking head with which if you knew the entire story you would basically understand why that's important for joel and i don't want to do a fucking spoilerino warning here but like come on figure it out you know figure it out it's it almost sometimes feels like the entire existence of mankind takes a back seat when you personally love someone. Okay? You get it? In, in season two, apparently, if it mirrors the video games, from what I've been told, it gets very trans and very lesbian and, and all the rest of it. And that's their prerogative. Yeah, that's what... <laughs> that's our takeaway from The Last of Us 2. 
Ben is very, very gamer without being a gamer. He has he embodies all the qualities of the sweatiest fucking losers on the planet who like think being the most annoying sweaty person is a personality trait and not a clear cut personality flaw without playing a fucking single video game, which is pretty funny. The Last of Us 2 is about being very gay and very trans. I hate it already. I haven't even seen it. <laughs> it's just like, congratulations, you did it. You popped off. Many of the many of the fucking weird incels also didn't even play the game and had that same opinion. So congratulations to Ben for that one, okay? He is identical to the fucking sweat lord gamers who never even played the game and is basically fucking saying, uh, you know, the, the talking shit without even fucking doing it. IRL stream with XQC and Hassan? Where, what do you mean? Where is that coming from? They're the creators of the show. But all of the talk about how this was like an excellent episode of TV that was wrapped into a, a broader show is not true. And pretending that it is, is ignoring kind of the dynamics of the show. So there is my critique of The Last of Us Episode 3. I know, I'm not allowed to say that I didn't like it. You have to say you loved it. And you particularly loved the most, like, the, the most graphic parts of it. Those are the parts you love the most, right? I mean, because if you don't say that, it means you're a homophobe or something. All I'm saying is that nobody actually paid to see the movie Bros. And when you go to see The Last of Us, what you generally want to see is a zombie apocalypse TV show, not two gay dudes dating while, lin while listening to Linda Ronstadt and then dying of old age after growing strawberries. I don't, I think that... Bro, this was a 13-minute video that it was a banger, by the way, because everyone is just as stupid as Ben, about Ben being like, too long, didn't understand the point, way too gay shit, way too much gay shit. That's it. While he secretly, he secretly actually loved it that's the other part of it he loved it he fucking admitted mo numerous times like it's beautifully shot it would work as a standalone showtime movie like he's subtly giving you hints that he also like kind of liked it <laughs> but like also it's unacceptable no it's just i you know i used to kind of not care about representation and pandering like this stuff but this episode tore my heart out and the way it pissed me off so many freaks made me realize that i actually love the pandering and overrepresentation. First of all, it wasn't even pandering. I don't even... I think that character is supposed to be gay in the video game, too. Like, it was just, like, another... For, I, I don't think that that... I think that that was a perfect gay character. A, a perfect love story in general. Because it wasn't about... Like, everything did not revolve around them being gay. You know what I mean? Oftentimes, a lot of uh, straight writers' rooms, which is changing now, put gay characters as, like, super one note. You know what I mean? They're just like, I'm gay, by the way. Which, by the way, some of you gay motherfuckers are like that, okay? Just for the record. So maybe reality is... <clears throat> Austin. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> but... No, it was great. It was like a, it was a character that, um, it was a character where like being gay was completely secondary, but also created this juxtaposition that, that was, was interesting and unique. You know what I mean? That was great. Yeah, it was perfectly acted by a man who historically plays extremely masculine characters, too. So, I, I liked it. And I, Frank, I think everybody who's like, wow, I, I was super into this. Yeah, I, I think some of you are lying. I think some of you are in it. Some of you were kind of lying. All righty, guys.